Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. No retraction. Security Minister stands by shoot to kill statement. Two men shot and killed in St. Catherine. And later in sports, reggae girls arrived in Panama for a Gold Cup qualifier. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang has doubled down on his stance that the police should shoot to kill when confronted by armed criminals. Dr. Chang was speaking on the morning agenda on Power 106 FM today. The latest crime data revealed that the country has recorded a little over 1,100 homicides up to Sunday, October 2022. A further 800 persons have been wounded in violent attacks since January. Also since the start of the year, the St. James Police Division has recorded the highest number of murders, 156, followed by St. Andrew South, 103, Westmoreland with 96, St. Catherine North, 95, and Clark Clarendon, 90. Despite a decline in murders, the numbers are still way too high. Of concern, too, is the seeming ease at which criminals are able to access firearms. The National Security Minister, Dr. Horace Strang, faced backlash from human rights group Jamaicans for Justice after he urged the police to defend themselves from armed thugs. Despite the criticisms, he says he maintains his position. The normal firearm is when we're loaded carries a missile that is designed to kill. So saying shoot to kill is rhetorical. Once you shoot, the intention is to kill. And if you have a bike man riding past and shooting at people, I have trained the police and I trained well, they must shoot. So you're, me, you're trying to create a case for, on, in, for aggression and violation of rights, which is the belief of the individuals we're speaking. That's an objective analysis of the situation. And therefore it renders those comments on me Dr. Chang argues that if he were to encourage the police otherwise, it would be almost equal to sedition. People are riding from bike, modify the firearms to the automatic. So they're going to empty that 18 clip in less than 10 seconds and two young individuals. And they must start thinking about, well, can I shoot at the foot? Can I shoot at the tire? Can I shoot this? No, come on now, Sandy. I don't have the problem against the AFC having their um, position and that they take a keen interest in human rights. But the comment and that comment is ridiculous. And at its best, because if you go beyond ridiculousness, then I'm saying there's somebody in there advising Miss Jackson that is almost tempting her to, to encourage sedition, which is to attack the legal of law enforcement officers wantonly, and that they must, they must take a shot literally. Last year, Dr. Chang also urged members of the security forces to shoot to kill when challenged by gunmen, noting that the country was spending too much to treat criminals at public health facilities. Catherine police are investigating a double murder in Orangefield, Linstead, this morning. The dead men have been identified as 33-year-old Dalton Dwyer, otherwise called Craig, and Raseel Givens, also known as Roger. According to reports, at about 7.45, the men were among a group of people at a business place when armed men drove up in two vehicles and opened fire at the group. Mr. Givens and Mr. Dwyer were shot. They were taken to hospital where they were pronounced dead. The number of bushfires increased this year compared to the same period last year. The revelation came from the Jamaica Fire Brigade. O'Shane Masters reports. There was a dramatic increase in bushfires for the January to September period this year in comparison to last year. Data from the Jamaica Fire Brigade shows that there were 3,033 more bushfires for the period compared to last year. Most of these fires were in St. Catherine and Kingston and St. Andrew. Combined, those areas had 1,889 bushfires. However, the Jamaica Fire Brigade says the unprecedented dry period and prolonged drought was a contributing factor to the increase in bushfires. While acknowledging that the figures are scary, Commissioner of Fire and Rescue Operations, Deputy Commissioner Kevin Horton, says the use of technology and the assistance of the JDF helped in combating the fires. Who would have used the helicopters to assist us in combating those bushfires in St. Andrew, especially in the St. Andrew area. We would have also incorporated drone technology in our operation. 
The Jamaica Fire Brigade says it still has challenges in reaching some spots when dealing with house fires. This as vehicles are parked along the roadside, but that's not the only concern. So fire access still is a concern, the use of building material on the roadways to gain entrance to some of these. These are concerns for, 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 for the fire department. Uh, unstructured settlements, people conducting development without getting formal approval from the municipal corporations within Jamaica, that too is an issue. However, despite an increase in malicious calls of 17.2%, they say there was an even greater increase in genuine calls to the fire brigade. For the period, there were 9,973 genuine calls, which represents a 59% increase over the comparative period last year. In the meantime, the JFB says it has increased building inspections for this year. According to its data, there were 7,099 building inspections compared to 5,842 last year, a 21.5% increase. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. An appeal for help from a family in Banks, Clarendon, after their house was set ablaze by a suspected arsonist. The family of three recalled hearing a loud explosion while asleep sometime after 1 a.m. I'm going to get up and look at me a fire. I see now I said, I'm thinking could I control the fire, but I couldn't control the fire. Is alleging that the house was set ablaze by a 16 year old in the community who previously broke into their home and stole money. They claim that at the time the matter was reported to the police, but nothing was done. My God Almighty, man, the man lose him house like this. Where man I go sleep tonight? Out I do a see you here? Where the baby I go sleep? Out I do a see you here? We need some help. The Jamaica Teachers Association has responded to the Education Ministry's plan to stop the streaming of students for subjects in high school. The Education Ministry has moved to end the practice, but despite the policy position, some schools are still doing it. The details in this report. The Education Ministry announced recently that it may discontinue the streaming of students for subjects in high school. But the Jamaica Teachers Association argues that the ministry's system of placement of students in secondary schools promotes the concept of streaming and that needs to be fixed first. We believe that the ministry's approach to how students are placed in high schools promotes streaming and we feel that the ministry has to fix that before they can go ahead to uh, try to get secondary schools to fully move the whole concept of streaming from the from their operations under the minister's streaming program students are placed into one of three pathways pathway one is for high performing students who require no support to matriculate out of a secondary level students who require some level of assistance are streamlined in pathway two and those who need full support from educators are placed into pathway three this is how schools are, are, are established if you if you look at the traditional or what we call the traditional Ivy League schools in some regards you may not find uh, students of pathways two and three in these schools. These schools only have pathway one students for the most part. You'll find students of pathways two and three uh, being placed in the upgraded high schools. Mr. Johnson underscored the difficulties faced by educators to administer learning to students streamed into pathways two and three. He's also calling for teachers who successfully help previously underperforming students to matriculate at the tertiary level to be credited by the Education Ministry for their efforts. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. It's now time for the Business Minute. Jamaicans spent more on food and non-alcoholic beverages for the 12 months up to September. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica says point-to-point -point inflation for the index was 9.8%. For the month of September alone, the cost of food and non-alcoholic beverages increased by 0.1%. 
Meanwhile, food prices rose by 1%, mainly due to increases in the cost of fruits and nuts, ready-made and other food products. These increases were, however, tempered by the 1.9% reduction in the cost of vegetables, tubers, plantains, cooking bananas, and pulses. Further afield, Microsoft's $69 billion takeover of Activision Blizzard is a done deal. It became official Friday after antitrust officials in the United Kingdom approved the acquisition. The Competition and Markets Authority was concerned Microsoft would be able to set cloud gaming prices with exclusive access to Activision's video games. Microsoft eventually satisfied regulators by agreeing to let French company Ubisoft buy streaming rights to Activision games outside the European Union. Owning Activision Blizzard gives Microsoft exclusivity to games like Overwatch and World of Warcraft for its Xbox and other platforms. Microsoft reached a deal with Sony earlier this year that guarantees Call of Duty will remain available on PlayStation for at least 10 years. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Shane Masters. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, swells generated by Hurricane Tammy will continue to affect portions of the Leeward Islands, the British Virgin Islands, the US Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico during the next few days. As at 5 p.m. yesterday, the US National Hurricane Center said Tammy was located about 695 miles south of Bermuda. It's expected to turn towards the northeast later today and this general motion should continue through tomorrow. On the international scene, at least seven people are dead and dozens injured after a massive car pileup along Interstate 55 in Louisiana, United States yesterday. The crash is believed to have been caused by thick fog and fumes from multiple marsh fires. Authorities say about 100 cars were involved in the incident. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report.